Good morning, a warm welcome to you, you who are members of Covenant United Methodist Church. We certainly continue to miss you and your presence uh, each and every Sunday. But welcome also to those of you who are not members of Covenant, uh, those of you who perhaps somehow have found your way uh, into our digital worship space. We pray that God's Spirit will be present uh, and meet us at our points of need as we gather in God's name. This is, of course, Ascension Sunday on this seventh Sunday of Easter, and you will notice that as part of our worship service, the confirmation class is helping to lead us. They'll be reading scripture and leading the pastoral prayer. Uh, but notice also that we are moving through beyond Ascension Sunday, we are moving to Pentecost. Pentecost is next Sunday, uh, and even now as we prepare to celebrate the birth of the the birth of the church, invite you to think of something red that you can hang on your front door. Uh, hang it on your front door, do take a photograph of it, send it to Kim at the office uh, in the normal way, and uh, we want to create a montage just celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, at, at the first Pentecost, uh, and prayerfully praying that God's Spirit would continue to creatively work in our world. So a warm welcome to you as Cam now leads us in reading the Gospel. Hi, I'm Cameron Sparks, and today I'll be reading John 17, 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all who you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And now they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and known in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on behalf, not of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. And that ends the reading. Hi, everybody. We're the youth group, and we are here to talk about how we pray. Sometimes when I pray, I like to pray about the things I'm thankful for. Sometimes when we pray, we pray for our friends and family. I like to pray when I'm sad or need help. Sometimes I pray for my school. Sometimes we pray for our church. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can pray for. So we're going to take this time right now to bit, uh, pray together. Okay. Dear God, thank you for this time together. And thank you for everything we are about to pray for. I'm thankful for the food on my table and the family and friends that we have. Sometimes we pray for our parents and grandparents. Please help to keep everyone safe in these trying times. I am thankful for our education. Thank you for my church who is always very supportive. And thank you for those first responders who are supporting us in this quarantine. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying with us and we hope you all have a great week. Bye. Amen. Thank you to our youth group, uh, led by Skylar, in uh, doing the, uh, the children's message. Uh, and now we uh, have a real treat. We have Kelsey Swindland uh, bringing a song to us. Thank you, Kelsey, for doing this. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord knows how. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our God. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The 
Sunday, and this text really excites me. In fact, this High Holy Day of Ascension Sunday excites me as well, because it goes to the core of the good news, the gospel as you and I know it. We gathered this morning, and the opening organ music that we heard, played majestically by a United Methodist Church here in the USA, really says it all. I hope you recognize the hymn. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Jesus has served, has loved faithfully, and now he rises to be with the Father, to be crowned with many crowns as the Lamb of God. I love this text that we're invited to consider on Ascension Sunday. But it's interesting if we look at this particular text of John chapter 17, 1 through 11, we notice that it's located before even the crucifixion. And yet it invites us to consider the ascension, which took, took place not only after the crucifixion, but also after the resurrection Easter appearances. Jesus begins this particular text in John chapter 17 saying, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. And really Jesus is inviting us to consider what glorification is all about. Because if, as we continue reading this gospel, Jesus says, I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Jesus came to love as God loves, to embody the very nature of God in the enactment of love in a world that was so full of unlove, to use that term. What did Jesus do? He gathers his disciples, concerned for them, and he's already preparing the way, not only for his death, but also for his resurrection and his ascension. And he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. And we know what follows. Jesus is arrested. Not only is he arrested, but he is tried and he is mocked and he is abused. He has a crown of thorns placed upon his head and eventually he is led out to be cruelly put to death, painfully suffering on that cross. 
Love refused to buckle. Love refused to say no to continue to love the world. And so Jesus, even on the cross, looks down upon those who would crucify him and loving them says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus glorifies the Father by showing the world, yes, the way of love, but the way of love that is unconditional, the way of love that even loves the enemy, the way of love that will break the cycle of violence, redeeming it in order to establish peace and justice rather than the rule of might, the rule of fear. And so Ascension Sunday, not an unimportant celebration. And this text helps us get to the heart. The hour has come, Jesus says. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. And the glorification of the Son is all about love. Love even unto death. And if we jump quickly to the bottom of this particular text, verse 11, Jesus says, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, referring to his disciples, and I am coming to you. Referring not only to his crucifixion, but also to his resurrection and ascension, and I am coming to you. And Jesus, with love for his disciples, says, Holy Father, protect them so that they may be one as we are one. Union with God. Jesus could never have loved like he did even unto death if he hadn't been united with the Father. And that's the protection that Jesus prays for his disciples. That's the protection that the Spirit yearns for you and for me. And that is union with God. As St. Francis says, it is when the divine spark within you and within me meets our humanity that incarnation happens in each of our lives. That is when the Christ works within us. That is when we are one with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it is when we are one that we are able to love as Jesus loved. That's the power that promises to change the world. The hymn says it all. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb of God upon his throne. The Lamb suffered and died, but loved not only to the end, to death, but beyond death, to through the resurrection, to the ascension and the promise of thy kingdom come. Amen. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Father, thank you for bringing each of us together in prayer and worship today. We pray for our covenant family who are sick and hurting. May they feel your healing embrace. We pray that you would guide and protect those who are working hard to care for our world and nation. May they turn to you for peace and courage during this difficult time. We ask that you bring encouragement to our hearts when we feel worried and strength to us when we struggle. May hope be a light within us that we carry into each day. We pray that we may walk with you as each new day begins and that your beautiful Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts. May you work through each of us to reach a hurting world. May we always know your love. Amen. Thank you to our youth for helping us worship today, to Brandon for reading the gospel, our youth group for delivering the children's message, and Kirsten uh, for writing and uh, leading us in the pastoral prayer. I remind you as we prepare to, to end this worship service to do those four things, to stay safe, to make two, to pray, and to give. 
stay safe, practice social distancing, and just know that Bishop has, Elaine has extended no in-person worship service through June 15th. So we will only consider having worship services after June 15th, but stay safe, make two, make two phone calls. It's so important for us as a church community to be in touch with one another on a regular basis, and you can be a part of that simply by picking up the phone, phoning somebody in the church who you know, who you haven't spoken to in some time, but also intentionally phoning somebody who you normally wouldn't speak to at church. And so make two, stay safe, make two. Thirdly, pray. Let this be a time where you can deepen your own devotional life through private prayer, but also know that we would love to know any prayer concerns that you may have. We meet, we meet every, every week on Wednesday for weekly Wednesday prayers to pray for your concerns. Just simply forward those prayer concerns to us through the regular channels. And finally, give. It's such a privilege to be a part of Covenant. Uh, Covenant truly is a giving church and we take seriously being a church who is active in mission. And the generosity of this church continues through this pandemic in actively supporting with groceries and other essential supplies, the three ministries that are so much a part uh, of our life together. And that is Shalom, New Hope, and Family Promise. There are lists of what they need in your email, emails, uh, please look at those emails so that you know what you need to bring. And so now know that we are not just simply free to go. We are not just dismissed. Rather, we are sent. Sent in Christ's name to live, love, and serve joyfully in all we do. Go in peace.